AI is useless. AI output looks awful. AI is just a gimmick and AI is not accurate. But the question is, does AI need to be accurate? Are we restricting ourselves and disregarding the potential of AI by expecting it to be 100% accurate? After reading a lot of similar comments on both YouTube and Instagram, I started finding the answers to it on one of the projects that I worked recently and I used Lumion and AI. Yes, you heard it right, Lumion and AI. In this video, I'll take you through the process of how I achieved these results using Lumion and Midjourney. I'm Salman, an architect and illustrator. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon for notification. So let's get started. To begin with, I was working on a project where I had to create renders of a sauna located along the sea waters. After modeling it in SketchUp, I began rendering it in Lumion. Even though I'm good at rendering in Lumion, I still need to spend a considerable amount of time to play around with the settings, lighting and see what works best for the project. I believe most of you can relate to this as well. So technically, I'm not the kind of person who can produce amazing results in a really short span of time. So my process always requires time to analyze, make iterations, redo some areas and arrive at the best results. But for this project, the catch was that I did not have time. So after using the exterior settings from Lumion and adjusting a few of those settings, my renders turned out to be like this. In a way, these are not bad renders as such. It still does the job, right? It represents the building design, materials, surrounding environment and everything. But having done so many better renders myself, I could clearly see that these images were flat, lacks an element of life, the materials doesn't reflect the quality they should and so on. Now if I had the time, I could definitely work on this and create a better looking scene. But the problem here was that I did not have the time or proper references to see how the building would look like in this environment. Having made a lot of videos on AI myself, I did think of taking a screenshot of the SketchUp model and using any of the AI platforms to create a great looking rendering. But the challenge here is that the client might have some revisions or additions to make on the model. So making those updates and creating the same kind of output with AI might be quite impossible. Since AI platforms usually give only a different style of rendering each time and we do not have consistency in the style we want. Same issue when we are trying to do different views of the same project, there is an inconsistency with the style which would look jarringly different when someone looks at it. These are some of the issues that even some of you guys have been mentioning and I do agree with them. But is there a way to work around this? I identified that there could be a solution to this. If we do have reference images of a sauna project in the same style and a same context, we would be able to recreate that with Lumion. And this can possibly be achieved using the text to image tools that are available with all the AI platforms today. And once we create those images, we can use them as references and update a 3D model and Lumion file as well. So I went ahead in mid journey and typed the keywords that describe the sauna and its context. And that generated a bunch of reference images that were quite similar in context to the design that we're working on. A little while ago, I mentioned that the initial renders we did were flat and lacks a bit of life in them. You can very well notice that when we compare it with the mid-journey images and the renders we have made initially. There are a lot of takeaways that we have from the AI images, so let's apply them into our rendering along the way. Number one is framing. Firstly, notice how most of these images have a great sense of framing by using a tree or plant quite closer to the point of view. This creates an effect of depth to the render and moves your eye towards the main subject. This is called framing in photography and that's something we have missed in our renders. So I went to Lumion and added a palm tree that frames the top right corner of the scene. I adjusted the camera height as well and depth of field to match with the AI images. Number two is the quality of the materials. In the AI renders, there is a great sense of materiality and we can almost get the feeling of what each material will feel like when we touch it. This is evidently lacking in our renders and it can be resolved by increasing the thickness of the materials on the model. So I've added a thickness of a few inches to these wooden boards on the walkway and also placed wooden boards with spacing on the structure. Also, it is important to break the monotony and create some imperfections in the model. So on the places like these stone foundations, I'm creating random cutouts and jagged edges to replicate the look of stone and not have them as one single rectangular block. Number three, objects in the scene. Notice how the structure gives a feeling of being inhabited by people even without showing human figures. This is achieved by having small objects that fill up the space. We've already tried doing that with a ball and a canopy in the background, but it doesn't seem enough. So we've added objects like the outdoor cushion seating on the platform and a wooden bench chair. It is important to vary the objects on each part of the scene and I've reworked and added stones in a variety of sizes along the shore. A bit of grass in different heights, lamps place around and also a fireplace. I've tried making them seem ununiform, so I've changed the angle and direction wherever possible. I also let go of the human figures, 
which can be added later in the post production. Number 4 the background. By background, I mean what happens on the far end of the image. You either build a scene and show what's happening there or you don't show the background at all. Like this example where it's completely hidden by trees. So I made some effort to create a background. I found a SketchUp model of a similar seaside with a large mountain. So I've added that into my model. I've also added some street lamps which would create a nice effect in the far end and a row of random trees to create a layer. Number 5 is the lighting in the scene. In most of these images, the sunlight doesn't have the maximum brightness and it doesn't harshly fall on the images. It's more like an element that lights up the scene to the required brightness. I especially like these evening scenes which had a nice play of light. There's also another render image by Steven from Show It Better which I had in mind because it has a nice contrast of light and shadow. So I somehow wanted to blend both of these into my scene. I started creating a night scene, adjusting a bunch of settings like exposure, color correction and so on. And finally, I arrived at a setting which works best for this scene. Those were the main takeaways when comparing but there are other small additions like the texture of sand and the water texture. I also created a daytime view in the similar process and it turned out like this. I'll leave a link to both these Lumion settings in the description in case you want to try it out. Once rendering it on Lumion, the images then went into Photoshop where I enhanced it with a few more elements like fire spark, human figures to match with the lighting, a vignetting effect around the image and also blend all of these together with the camera raw filter. Here's a before and after and the final images. So this video was more like a documentation of the mistakes that I made and how I used AI to resolve them. This is not the kind of content that most creators would share but I still wanted to put this out. Comment down below of how you like this process and if you have any questions as well. I hope you like this video and if you did, please hit that like button and share this with your friends. You can follow me on Instagram and the handle is right here. I'll see you on the next one.